You see, as sexy as a wolf or even a lynx is, or maybe even a bison, can bison be sexy? Um, as interesting as a bison can be, when it comes to using rewilding as a landscape management, it's important to remember that these creatures are the cherries on top of the cake. The sponge and main body of that cake is our landscapes, our national parks, agricultural lands, cities, towns and everything else. You see, there's no way you can place the cherries on top of the cake until you properly bake the sponge and put on the icing and sprinkles and whatever else you do to a cake. Ultimately, the UK, in this cake baking analogy, we're still very much gathering ingredients to make that sponge. In actual fact, to drag this analogy further, we've only just realized that we need to be baking a cake as Mother Nature is very hungry and we've neglected to feed her. And we've looked in the kitchen and we've realized that our flour is almost empty and that our eggs have gone bad and our water is coming out the tap a little rusty. I'll drop the cake analogy for now, but the point is, is that we need to do a lot of work to prepare the physical landscape, ensuring that we have sufficient and, and self-regulated ecosystems but also and I think this one is going to be more difficult and that is to prepare the people of Britain. The majority of British people are ecologically numb and deprived. For a myriad of reasons our lives often feel so separate to the functioning of natural systems to the growth of old trees and animals that live within them. Now I'm not bashing the UK's wildlife or its people far far from it but if we're talking reintroductions of animals like lynx and wolves there's going to be concern there's going to be issues and it's that concern which we need to relinquish we need to listen to everyone and address each and every question that comes up but more so we need modern research to look at the facts and best plan for reintroductions stuff is happening right now but it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take a lot of effort but we have to remember that we are all the chefs in baking this cake and some of us may have more responsibility some of us may have more influence but we can all play our role in ensuring that those cherries reach the top of that cake so without further ado let's meet those cherries let's get things started off with the lynx now the lynx is the most likely large land predator we are going to see reintroduced to the uk no one knows for certain as they were very secretive animals but we believe they went extinct in the uk around a thousand years ago but some believe they could have held on for longer in the further reaches of scotland there's uh, there's even a lot of speculation about big cats living in the uk right now <laughs> But that's another video altogether. If you're interested in seeing that video, let me know. I've got some plans, I've got some contacts. So why did the lynx go extinct? Well, you guessed it, it was humans. Hunting and habitat loss. Now these would be the main culprits for most animals going extinct, so it's important to ask the question, if we are to reintroduce the lynx, are these threats still in place? I mean, it's pretty safe to assume it's quite the logical approach that if we did reintroduce the lynx to the UK, they would be fully protected and there would most likely be some kind of mitigating body that could deal with the lynx, maybe like wildlife rangers or something like that. But we'll get into talking how to manage the lynx within the landscape in just a minute. As for suitable habitat, well, yes. Tom Overden conducted research which found a number of suitable sites to release the lynx. The most suitable being the Kintyre Peninsula in Scotland. So yes, the research shows that the landscape is physically ready. And of the other large land predators, why? Why is the lynx the most likely? Well, it's got a lot to do with their characteristics. You see, a lynx is a very secretive animal, rarely seen in the wild. They're woodland specialists because they hunt using stealth and ambush techniques, so it's unlikely you'll get them venturing into your local Tesco's to grab a meal deal. They favour taking small deer species such as roe or fallow, but have been known to take the larger red deer. The UK's deer population is at an estimated 2 million. Now, that's an awful lot of deer causing a lot of problems. So given that there'll be protected, there's a lot of suitable habitat and that they'll be really hard to spot even for wildlife enthusiasts and also the fact that there's never been a recorded death, you know, a, a lynx attacking a human, why aren't they being reintroduced tomorrow? Well, at the minute, the Lynx to Scotland study is currently underway and it's looking at the people and places most likely to be influenced by the lynx. Until the results are released, it's safe to assume that among the most concerned are livestock farmers. Lynx, as well as wolves, have been known to kill sheep and if you're a sheep farmer and you wake up in the morning to a field of slaughtered sheep, you have every right to be concerned. And that's just it, the lynx often kill multiple sheep in one go, as sheep are easy pickings for a lynx. Some methods of mitigation include using guardian dogs that live with the flocks, keeping the sheep within enclosed and controlled areas with areas of fencing and dense planting to keep the lynx out and the sheep in. Compensating the farmers for their losses is another way that has been used across Europe. But fundamentally, as a nation, if we want to be greener, carbon negative, 
A lot of this will rely upon the health and stability of our national parks and of our landscapes. And I'm not outrightly blaming livestock farming for the sole reason why our landscapes have become degraded. That's just one element. And that coupled with the fact that there's been no predators and all the other ways that humans have changed the landscape. And it's led to our national parks, you know, which really should be our, our most wild areas. It's led them to be just this largely lifeless, open space. So encouraging landowners to shift away from intensively grazing livestock and to instead adopt a more passive dynamic approach of rewilding their lands will not only mean that there will be less sheep for the lynx to predate but fundamentally it will be a big piece in the jigsaw that allows the landscape to recover. What other predators might we see? Wolves are, for many of us, a symbol of wilderness. Wolves, for many of us, are also pretty damn scary, and in the UK, they were heavily persecuted, made to be the villain and hunted to extinction around 400 years ago. And really, when it comes to wolves, there's two main misconceptions. Firstly, it's that they're fierce and they'll kill you. Secondly, it's a general lack of understanding and respect for their influence in the landscape. Over the past 50 years, we've realised the critical role that apex predators play within an ecosystem. Being at the top of the food chain, they initiate trophic cascades, which are direct and indirect effects felt throughout the food chain. And as for wolves being human eating monsters, well, they are certainly capable and wolf attacks do take place. They're pack animals and they're considerably stronger than say a lynx. But the facts show that a wolf attack is unlikely, even where wolves are most frequent. We've already made a video on will a wolf kill you and not to repeat that video, when you look at the facts and the research, you have to be extremely unlucky for, for a wolf to attack you let alone kill you. Much like with the lynx, the biggest concern comes from livestock farmers. But again, I put forward the idea of shifting our landscapes away from intensive livestock grazing. We know that's bad for the health of our ecosystems and we know what good wolves can do for those systems. There's an abundance of natural prey and, and Scotland really is the most likely place to see a wolf reintroduction. But remember, there's no point reintroducing a species if the reasons are still there for why they went extinct. And with the wolf, are, are they still there? Well, yes, I believe they are. So throughout the history of human and wolf relationships, I believe that here in the UK, we are at a pivotal moment. We've had this dark history of not only killing all of the UK's wolves and a lot of other native species, We've also realised that ecosystems function better when they're complete. And now we're at the point of trying to put all of this right, or at least not make any more mistakes. And that's why it's a pivotal moment. I believe with the right communication, education and planning, a wolf reintroduction really isn't that far away but we're not there just yet. I think it's time to talk about the brown bear. So of the big three, the lynx, the wolf, the bear is probably the furthest away from a reintroduction. Healthy bear populations are really a symbol of a thriving ecosystem. They eat an array of different foods, from berries to fungi, animals large and small, and a thriving ecosystem will have all of these things in place and in abundance. Bears really do just complete a woodland. Bears, like most large predators, are keystone species. Given their very diet, they disperse seeds, and given their ability to hunt and kill, they control herbivore populations. So bears roam freely, and they've almost got nothing to worry about. But, you know, in their search of food, this often brings them closer to people, which means that there's going to be conflicts. And these conflicts are less likely when the bear has everything they need in their habitat. But so frequently, habitat loss and degradation leads to bears crossing over with people, and this is where the problem is. And in these situations, the fact show that bears are dangerous. So could a bear reintroduction work in the UK? Well, theoretically, yes, it could, along with wolves too, but I just don't think we have the space yet. We don't have those core wilded areas yet for creatures like bears. Now the lynx, the wolf and the bear, they are the larger of the land predators. They're also gonna have the biggest impact ecologically and economically, but there are some smaller predators which we need to give a mention to, not least, the Scottish wildcat. Centuries of persecution and habitat loss has pushed the Scottish wildcat to the brink. And one of the biggest threats today is hybridization from the closely related domestic cats. Now they may be closely related, but they are tremendously different in temperament. The Scottish cat is considered fierce and untamable. They play a crucial role in regulating populations of rabbits, rats, and squirrels. They stand heavily threatened today, and they are one of the UK's last native land predators. And if they go extinct or if they survive, it's gonna be on us. The pine martin, this is one of the UK's rarest carnivores just behind the wildcat. The climbs began when they were hunted, but also as man cleared much of the woodlands in the UK. And being a woodland specialist, this put a great strain on the pine martin's populations. And now it's been noted that the only way to rescue populations is through active intervention. Therefore, reintroducing and translocating animals to suitable areas they otherwise couldn't naturally colonize. Now look, I think 
If we're to see these types of reintroductions, there's three common themes occurring. Firstly, we have to prepare the landscape. We need to develop core strongholds that can support populations of these animals, and we do that through changing the way we use the land, employing passive and active rewilding strategies. Secondly, it's about people. We have to educate, we have to listen, we have to talk and figure out the problems and issues that will arise, but I'm confident that we will. And thirdly, these animals make a lot of money. Oh wait, we haven't even spoken about how much money these animals can bring to rural areas. Watch the video on the screen now and find out just how much money the lynx can make the UK. Thanks for watching, leave curious.